What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, May 8th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, Welcome to my channel. This is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other airborne virus or any virus that could be a health threat to you. If it's a virus, chances are we may have reported on it. And let's face it, there's a lot of viruses out there. You need a platform where you can be informed on it daily. That's what I do here on YouTube. So if you want to stay informed and in the know of what's going on, subscribe down below. Want to help keep other people informed? Well, first off, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. The more people that hit that like button, the more YouTube's going to send us out through the algorithm. And it's been proven lately as our channel views have been going up. Also, if you know anyone that wants to stay informed or should get a reminder that COVID is still a thing and that there are other viruses out there, by all means, share these videos with anyone you know. And of course, if you have any comments, leave them down below. All right, today we're going to start off with just a few news stories, and some things from Twitter. Then we're going to take a look at some of our daily data. We're going to take a look at a few more Walgreens states today, wastewater, some BioBot data. Yes, BioBot did update. Uh, some CDC data, New Jersey, New York. And of course, we did get an update out of Colorado, but a little bit of an explanation later on. Looks like there may be some changes coming to Colorado. First off, starting off with a state that we have not talked about in some time, and that is Vermont. Not a lot to say about Vermont, and we're starting off with good news today. I haven't started a video off with the good news in a while, and I think this is a good opportunity to do so. Vermont Department of Health, COVID cases, deaths, hospitalizations, near pandemic lows. Yes, things continue to drop in the great state of Vermont. Take a look at this. You can see here, back in April... Vermont only had three deaths for the entire month, March 11, uh, February of this year, 16, and they did have a peak back in January of 28, and that is much lower than um, it's been for quite some time, but their peak back in January actually matches their peak of February of last year. However, they had more consecutive months last year during the 2023 winter surge that were in the 20s than at any point this year. And in 2022, they had the months in the 30s. And looks like their peak was back in December of 2020. 72 deaths in one month. That was December 2020. And January of uh, 2022, they did have 72 deaths. And they had quite the period there. That was probably the most prolonged period 2021 into 2022 of higher deaths. So, yeah, deaths, look at this. They're really coming down in Vermont. Will they have a month soon with zero deaths? We can only hope so. Let's hope that happens. All right, moving on to this now. Speaking of COVID deaths, that seems to be the theme to start our video. This is kind of a reversal of Vermont's good news. Japan, yeah, this is not good. Japan saw over 16,000 deaths from COVID-19 in May through November of 2023, as we know right now, Japan is currently seeing elevated levels of COVID and their hospitalizations have been rising. So hopefully they're not headed for a repeat when it comes to deaths. This is being tweeted out by Dennis, the COVID guy, and there is a article, full article on this, and I did retweet the story. Moving on to our next thing here. This has to do with bird flu, H5N1. Bird flu farm states tell Biden I'm in to back off after major outbreak. I retweeted this last night, and then I even copied and pasted on, on another tweet, something from within this article. I want you to hear what this says. This is totally absurd, and I even put that. It really is. Texas Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller, who is a possible pick to lead the USDA if Donald Trump wins the presidential election, said in an interview with Politico, it's overreach. They don't need to do that. They need to back off. What's he referring to? He does not want CDC teams to come into Texas and help investigate and collect data on what is going on with these um, outbreaks at farms. He doesn't want the CDC to do testing to get to the bottom of this. 
totally ridiculous. And for those of you who used to watch the drama series, there's a lot of different drama series. The one I can think of off the top of my head, a Texas-themed one, Walker, Texas Ranger, back in the 90s. Um, they did have a couple episodes where there were viruses that were going around, and CDC would come in to help contain those viruses. And let's face it, in real life, CDC does have teams. Like, remember when MPOC started, they would have someone that would hit, lead that up. A whole bunch of uh, different things over the years. They would send teams to different places to help uh, investigate what's going on and get a control on viruses. Well, according to this, the um, Texas Agriculture Commissioner wants no parts of that. And to make matters worse, it's sounding like farmers do not want to cooperate either. And farmers don't want these teams coming as well, which tells me if farmers are working around infected cattle, uh, here's the problem. Say they get sick. They're probably not likely to get tested for it. That's a big problem. If they're not going to get tested and other people start getting sick, how are we to know if it is H5N1? Chances are it probably is, but we're not doing testing, so we're not going to know what's going on. All right, moving on to this. AstraZeneca withdraws its COVID-19 vaccine from the market, citing low demand. This was posted by the moderator on my site, who I have as uh, Steve. He's the moderator on my site. Always post, post fantastic stuff. And I'm going to read the summary that he put. The company, AstraZeneca, has withdrawn its COVID-19 vaccine from the market, citing low demand. The company reports that the vaccine has not created any revenue for the company since April 2023. The vaccine was mostly available in Europe and in other parts of the world, but not in the United States, where Pfizer and Moderna's mRNA-based vaccines dominated. And I was reluctant to add this, but I have seen several articles, I mean, coming from various different sources, some credible, that are also saying there were some uh, adverse effects of the vaccine. Not going to get into that. That's not what I'm about here on the channel. I'm about keeping you safe from the virus. I don't like to drift over into that too far, so we're just going to leave it at that. But, I mean, right here, here's a biggie. It's not making money for the company. Well, if it's not making money, why should they continue to sell it? I mean, you have a, this pandemic. Far too often, money has been put ahead of people's public health and safety. All right, taking a look here. Allergy situation, pollen levels today, a little bit worse. You may have just saw it was 38% yesterday. That was medium or high status. Today, it's 42%. That's medium to high status. And the Great Lakes and parts of the Midwest do dominate with the most pollen today. Taking a look at air qualities for today, we have to refresh this. Eh, maybe it's not going to come up today. All right. Nope, here we go. It's coming up. We're going to get this. We're also going to look at the Midwest again in just a moment. Twice, actually. You can see here, the Midwest is not bad today for air qualities. Down in Texas, down through uh, Memphis, Tennessee, Arkansas, Shreveport, Louisiana, really bad air qualities for you today. I'm seeing a lot of red. Not sure what the deal is there. I do know you have a very unstable and moist air mass. I'll show you that. Uh, next, taking a look here in the southeast, we do have bad air quality state. Again, not as bad as in Texas, and not too bad on the west coast. And here's what I mean by you have an unstable air mass in portions of Texas and portions of Kentucky. Yes, I have to keep you safe from this as well. There is a big threat of severe weather. While I don't have enough time to operate my other channel, which talks about climate, I can briefly show you this. There is a moderate risk of severe weather across portions of Missouri, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Please take this serious. The last few days have been extreme for tornadoes. There were some extremely violent, damaging tornadoes in Oklahoma the other day, and today looks to be uh, just as bad. I know it does not say high risk. Whether it's a moderate risk or high risk, it doesn't matter. There have already been numerous storms today, and already seven reported tornadoes. 246 total storm reports, and this day is nowhere near even being done. There's uh, tornado watches that use these red boxes up and down from Texas, so please take that seriously. Moving on. EMS incidents for Philadelphia today. Um, 836 were posted again on Tuesday. Looks like we're coming back to the weekdays being over 800. I'm hoping tomorrow when I look at the number, hopefully the Wednesday total will be less. Doubt it, though. I'm looking outside. I'm looking at my thermometer here. It's 86 degrees outside. You know, heat 
plus people having difficulty with breathing troubles. Remember, since COVID started, a whole slew of new people now have breathing issues that never had breathing issues before. I'm one of them. I can raise my hand to that. Luckily today, knock on wood, so far has not been too bad for me, but it does cause there to be more EMS call volume. And of course, other stuff may be picking up as well. Taking a look at what is going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Mind you, we are late with today's update. It is 625, and there are currently, wow, uh, how many calls? 18 calls in Montgomery County. And I'm seeing dizziness. I'm seeing seizures. I'm seeing all kinds of of uh, stuff going to respiratory emergency, vehicle accidents, of course. It is rush hour, so accidents will happen. Chester County, Pennsylvania, this just refreshed on us. Not bad. Only four calls there. We'll read them off. Falls, lift assist, respiratory difficulty, heart problems, and falls and lift assist again. All right, Walgreens. National positivity is 14%. The prior week was 12.6%. That is up by 1.3%. Total test, 3,763. The prior week was 3,941. Let's just do a few states. We're not going to do a lot of states because I do want to get to some wastewater data as well. Ohio this week, 14.5% positivity rate. The prior week was 12.3%. Difference of up, 2.2%. Total test, 62 versus 73. So that rise is a uh, cause of less testing. Taking a look now, let's go to a state where positivity rate is dropping. Oklahoma, 3.8%, 11.1% last week, down by 7.3%, and testing down 26 versus 45. That's a good thing. That means your uh, levels are definitely dropping, and that's good because you do often have the most highest rate of long COVID in the country. Idaho. They didn't report last week, so this week just jumps up to 25 tests versus 9 on the prior week's testing, whenever that was. And we'll do one more state, Nebraska. 11.8% positivity rate to prior week was 14.3%. That's a difference of down 2.5%. Total test, 17 versus 21. All right, drum roll, please. Biobot did update. A little bit of a change here. We are continuing to see dropping conditions in the Midwest. We are seeing, let's see here, in the West Coast. Yes, the West Coast is generally flat from last week. It did drop ever so slightly, and the South is down ever so slightly, but the Northeast now is starting to see a slight increase for COVID in wastewater. So that is not a good thing. But again, it's only a slight increase at this time. Taking a look at a couple of wastewater sites. Ann Arbor, Michigan, I do have picked out here. 125,000 population dropping at this time for COVID. Low for RSV. Low for influenza. It says medium, but really it's, it's, it's low levels of influenza A and B at this time. Uh, HMPV has rose slightly. Take a look at norovirus. It's medium at this time, but it continues to drop. And taking a look at MPOX, no issues, and a couple detections of hepatitis A. Let's take a look at one more wastewater site. And this time, we will go out to the West Coast. We will take a look here. How about we go up to San Francisco and see what is going on in the Bay Area at the this time. And in San Francisco, we do see at the ocean side wastewater facility, 250,000 population. It is saying medium for COVID, and it is bouncing around and rising ever so slightly. So we'll go with that. Uh, RSV, no issues. Influenza A, it's coming up high, but it's not high on the chart. Neither is influenza B, which is coming in at low. HMPV rose slightly. Norovirus is starting to rise once again. And MPOX, no issues. Hepatitis A, there have been just a few detections of that. Taking a look at the CDC data, hospital emissions in the past week, down a 11.1%, 5,098 people in the hospital, and that is pretty much a sea of green on the CDC map. Remember, we did say that the Vermont deaths are dropping. That's likely the case in the majority of the country. Why? Because, well, less people are being hospitalized right now. When less people are being sent into the hospital for COVID, less people go into the ICU, well, then you start having less people... Um, 
dying of COVID, which is a good thing at this time. Of course, we know this could be an underreported number and percentage of staffed ICU beds occupied by COVID-19 patients. A lot of green on the map. There are still a couple orange counties here and there. Not too many of them, but a couple of these orange counties, which do see a substantial amount, anywhere from about 6 to 7.9%. But mind you, these counties probably do not have many ICU beds. Some counties in the United States don't have any. Some have just two so if it's two you know what that means that means if one person's in the icu for COVID, that's 50 percent of your icu bed space for that county moving on to the latest variant kp.2 is moving along at 24.9 percent we will get an update on that once again in the near future and taking a look here at the next variant, JN.1, is at 22%. I think this is the next week that we do get an update on the variant, so we'll have to see what happens. Taking a look here at the latest flu levels, flu levels are low at this time across the majority of the United States. This is for influenza. All right, moving on to New Jersey. Only 65 out of 70 hospitals reported today, reporting 155 hospitalizations, four people on a ventilator, 20 in the ICU, and 27 discharges at this time. New York State, 330 new cases. That is not an increase over yesterday, or that's not an increase at all over last week. That's actually a relatively good number. Taking a look, however, at hospitalizations, they did increase ever so slightly. I will zoom this in so you can see the most recent number. New York State hospitalization. You can see yesterday was 437. Today is 446. 38 people in the ICU. So even the ICU number went up ever so slightly. Taking a look at Colorado. Now Colorado did post a little note here. It says starting on May 8th, Colorado Department of Health, CDPHE, will update COVID-19 variant data on the second Wednesday of each month instead of every two weeks. Historical variant data will also appear in one-month intervals. The last bi-weekly update was posted on April 10th with a decline in reported cases. Uh, Colorado Department of Health does not receive enough specimens in a two-week period. Okay, And it looks like here there's also going to be a change with data for the hospital admissions and you can see here the hospital chart is blank i believe this is the same hospitalized number as last week 75 and the number of cases reported is 536 at this time and emergency department visits diagnosed with covid is at 0.3 percent Alrighty, folks that does it for the wednesday edition of the pandemic update of course we'll have another pandemic update again tomorrow and also on friday i'm thinking friday's update may be an out in the wild update Stay tuned. We'll have to see how that goes. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Remember, the more likes we get, the more YouTube pushes this out through the algorithm, which is a good thing. That means we can help keep more people safe. We can help grow the channel bigger. The bigger this channel gets, the more people we are helping out, the more people we are informing. If you're new here, you liked what you saw today, want to see it again, subscribe down below. Think more people need to see this? Share this with anyone you know. Got something to say? Leave a comment down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching, and have a fantastic Wednesday evening.